So, Biwa Biwa, this will be a short speech on second sight. What is second sight? Is it clairvoyance predicting the future? No. We don't have enough information to predict the future apart from using our sane sense. Now, second sight is basically a CD, as in ancient India they called it. It's when your consciousness and your spiritual vehicle somehow finds the keys and calibrates with the ethereal world, with the world invisible to others, and backfeeds the signal into your senses, into your brain, into your eyes, so it is interpreted by your visual core, and yes, you can see many things. How can you stand it, the horrors, the nightmares, the dead, the flying skulls, and the beheaded things? Well, first things first. You need years to adapt to it, and some of us may end up in psychiatric asylums. Completely insane, because this is an anomaly in the modern world. Other, in other words, we are not civilizationally conditioned to such sight, or culturally conditioned. It was present in the past, it was always present, but in the modern world, it is not that common. So, uh, personally, after years of combat and strife and overcoming fear, pain and torment, what you see as shadow people, the dead, uh, multiple worlds of the black earth and the flyers and the demons and all that, and the terror corpses, the cadavers in your bed, uh, and the flying beauties, the Caducean stuff, the sand disks, the sylvan darlings, there's a narrate living nearby, very small spirit, but they're most noble, knightly, and uh, very fascinating of keen intelligence and brightness. So much for praising the Nereid and Ether Sylphen spirits. So, how do we cope with that? We cope with that by creating a virtuality. We have an expanded sense, so to say, of seeing, feeling, tactile sensations and so on. So that will be in the modern psychiatric paradigm a classic example of schizophrenia and the delusions developed about it in the process. But psychiatrists do not see those things and they don't experience much of such phenomena. So therefore they are bound by the paradigm and whenever someone sees something he is taken for an insane because others don't see it so naturally they won't agree with the perception of the beholder, the experiencer of the second sight. So, sometimes I feel like a horse with blinds on my left and right eyes in order not to go like this all the time, although I see many things, like a cat. Cats have second sight, that is natural to them, I have a bit of a cat sight, hail past it. So, what I would like to say, that I treat it like gifts from Hecate physis of the dark wards and the Ktonis aspects of Hecate Ktonios physis, as well as from Isis, Io, Hieros, Hieros, so to say. Uh, and when after years of combat with the hells and seven years of surviving demons of wasps or the dead, the vipers, the vampires, and all sorts of cohorts of darkness, uh, Isis decided to reward me with the seeing of the upper worlds. Hey, Isis. So, what does it entail? It entails that I rejected every religion that contradicted it, what I said, what I've seen, what I experienced. And in such a manner, they called me a liar. Because I don't know whether the freak thing on the cross ever seen those things that he was talking about. Probably not. Uh, so with this Horusian sight, as I like to call it, I catalogued, understood and interpreted in a better or worse fashion because as a human being, still mortal, I'm erring in my cognitions, in the way I interpret things. It doesn't mean that I have some objective truth, because I don't. It means that I may be better at interpreting certain phenomena than other people. So. All this said, how happens that we don't go insane on all of that? Because we decide to interact with only certain things. Like a human being that sees insects, like a fly that falls into his eye, or flying things, they don't notice many things around. And at first, when we are second sighters, 
the mind adapts. So we see things everywhere and it's like wow or terror or oh a nightmare and we feel fear and we are freaked out and we run through the city and scream oh the devils are everywhere. But then again after years after the dust settles we treat it like a natural part of an environment. The human being tends to adapt to even most impossible things on this planet. And that must be understood in such a way. So I decided to launch this series of lectures to be your eyes. Because I may give you some information that I see, like a corpse of a village girl over there, half a Tarek. I danced with her in the field once, an excellent dancer, all these, you know, uh, folk dances. So, uh, this much said, I will continue. Thank you.